Hello, today's lesson is on herpangina. In this lesson, I will talk about etiology, pathogenesis, clinical manifestation, diagnosis, and the treatment of herpangina. Herpangina is an acute febrile illness associated with small vesicular or ulcerative lesions on the posterior or pharyngeal structures. It usually develops in children, occasionally it occurs in newborns, adolescents, and young adults. Herpangina is a pharyngeal infection typically caused by enteroviruses. From the enteroviruses, enterovirus 71 is the most common cause of herpangina. In addition to enteroviruses, herpangina is caused by Coxsackie virus A16 and the Coxsackie virus B and also other viral infections. When we see the transmission, viruses that cause herpangina typically are spread via the fecal or root although they may spread via the respiratory route or through fomids. Herpangina typically has an incubation period of 4 to 14 days, and the viremia occurs after inoculation and subsequently results in distant sites of infection. Viral replications at the secondary sites lead to characteristic clinical symptoms and oropharyngeal lesions. Bilateral anterior cervical lymphadenopathy may occur, resulting from infection of the posterior oropharynx. Coxsackie virus A might be recovered from the nasopharynx, this is blood, urine, and the CSF fluid. After clinical symptoms have resolved, asymptomatic enteroviral infection may persist in the gastrointestinal tract. When we see the symptoms and the signs, the symptoms vary for each person diagnosed with herpangina and range in severity. Symptoms of herpangina include fever, headache, loss of appetite, sore throat, Source or blisters or ulcers in the mouth and the throat. Hyperemia of the pharynx is associated with lesions that characteristically appear as discrete retamatous based macules. As you see on the image, this evolve into papules that vesiculate and then ulcerate centrally, creating an retamatous follow. In most cases, these lesions are the first physical finding of herpangina. The lesions are typically smaller than 5 mm in diameter, and the most cases of herpangina involve 2 to 12 lesions. Occasionally, lesions caused by herpangina appear on the tongue and the posterior buccal mucosa. The ulcers may persist for up to one week, even after the fever has subsided. When we see the complications of herpangina, few patients may have meningitis or encephalitis symptoms, and also less often patients can have polio-like illness, and prolonged recovery. The most severe complications and the mortality have been associated with enterovirus 71 infections, with cardiopulmonary failure due to neurogenic pulmonary edema or hemorrhagic related to severe encephalitis. Regarding medical treatment of herpangina, herpangina is a self-limited illness, so treatment is generally supportive and includes hydration, antipyretics, and topical analgesics, till the symptoms resolve this. This is all about herpangina. Thank you for watching.